Garrett, game 162, it's kind of hard to believe we're here. When you look at the season as a whole, how do you evaluate things? Um, yeah, definitely a tough season for us and um, some opportunities to learn um, about ourselves going forward. Um, I am happy that we finished over 500. Um, I've been on a couple clubs where, you know, probably right about the same time, the writing was on the wall that it, it wasn't going to work out to get to the postseason, and uh, those those teams didn't finish over 500. So um, I'm proud of the guys for doing that, um, and uh, looking forward to looking forward to getting after it this off season and, and getting better prepared for next year. What has this group learned? What have you learned? Yeah, I mean that. Uh, it just reinforces, you know, the, the saying in spring training about, you know, everything is, you know, everything looks good on paper, but, you know, where where are you sitting in the standings when Meredith interviews you in September is the real question. So, um, look, just overall, we're going to have to be better. Um, and, there's, yeah, there's no way around it. <laughs> Anything in particular that you see that stands out to you, an area that this team can improve or a process part of it that can improve? Yeah, I think the, the blessing about the Yankees is that, you know, they're always self-evaluating and as an organization they're, you know, committed to winning. So it means evaluating the entire process really in, in, in all different areas. Um, there are probably some areas that are should be more of a focus, but you know those. Are, that's that's kind of a little bit above, a little bit above my pay grade as as a player. I think you should just be looking to improve across the board and off the field, on the field, strategy, training, you know, whatever you can. You just have to have that hunger to keep getting better. Do you get involved at all in those conversations with Aaron Boone, Brian Cashman, the front office staff about what you see? I mean, I'm here to help, so you know, I'll answer any questions straightforward i mean that's that's who i am um i think i think judgy does a great job of getting the players consensus and you know our conversations together uh obviously um in one way or another you know are reflected to to cash and 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 how you know uh, on on where the you know where the players stand but that that's that's only you know that's only one element one piece of the pie so you mentioned Aaron Judge first year as captain of the New York Yankees yeah. anything different about what you saw from him knowing that he is the captain no no yeah he did a great job <laughs> anything from a leadership perspective that you saw him maybe be a little bit more vocal um a little bit more vocal certainly um you know, certainly a different situation than last year obviously just hitting home run after home run and, and being healthy the whole year um you know uh, had a few more games few more opportunities to lead between the lines and and this year some of those got taken away from him but he was you know he still found a way to be impactful uh both in the preparation and the game planning um you know throughout those games that he wasn't playing and so that was probably something that i hadn't seen from him because you know it this was just kind of an unfortunate event, but, um, you know, still set the tone for us whether he was out on the field or not. And, and, and honestly, you know, Rizzo did the same thing. We have a lot of professional guys in that regard. So You're a guy that is always striving for perfection. When you look at your year, how do you get better than you were this year? I asked my wife that last night. <laughs> what did she say? Um, she said, I don't know yet. And I said, I don't know yet either. And she said, that's a good problem to have. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be diving into it real soon here. And, um, you know, at this point in your career, sometimes it's just little tweaks, you know, that, that can make a big difference. Um, first and foremost, so it's got to, got to recover and, and start to get after the training routine here in a couple of weeks. And then we'll figure out, you know, what exact, what pitches, you know, what pitches we want to improve and, and, and how we, how we see, you know, staying on top of our game going forward. What stands out to you about your performance this year? Um, just some good adjustments from last year, really. Uh, some just some things that we started tackling in the off season and they, they paid dividends throughout the, the whole year. And then our adjustability throughout the year was 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 good. Um, so and, and that, you know, 
a lot of a lot of credit in in, in that regard goes to the catchers and and uh, and the rest of my teammates as well. So. You are always dialed in, whether you're pitching or not. How much have you enjoyed being a sounding board for some of these younger pitchers? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 part of the blessing of being an, an older pitcher is, uh, you know, passing down some of the knowledge that, you know, I, I was I was gifted as, as a young guy and gifted by being around some great pitchers and great players. So, um, you know, I just, I benefited a lot from that. So it's kind of a way of giving back to the game and, and, and trying to keep the integrity of the game and the, and, the, and the product high. I mean, we want guys to perform well, and we want this to be the best league in the world. And, you know, so there's there's a little bit of the onus on the players in terms of that and in terms of keeping up that uh, that reputation. You did a pretty cool thing for Clark Schmidt. I saw he had a couple of bottles of champagne in his locker. You just congratulating him on a long season and making 30-plus starts. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, it just... You know, it becomes a, it's a rare, it's a rare and rarer thing these days. Um, you know, to no fault of his own, he probably wasn't considered, you know, an option to make 32 starts at the beginning of the year when everything was on paper. Uh, and lo and behold, he was, uh, he was very consistent for us. He was a rock. Um, he overcame a lot of adversity earlier in the season, um, which, you know, we all do. We're all faced with adversity. And I thought he handled that really well and laid the foundation for himself. Um, he's obviously finishing the season healthy and strong, so a couple bottles of champagne I, I thought were more than appropriate. Are you excited by what you've seen from the guy that's going today and Michael King since he entered that starting rotation? Yes, absolutely. I mean, he's he's got all the tools. Um, so it's fun to, fun to watch that success. Another guy that's just been clawing, you know, to get into the rotation, I mean, uh, I think that's, I mean, he loves it. I mean, he, he wants to be a starter. That's his dream. He puts a lot into his craft, and he's had to find a different path than some other people to get to that get to that, that, uh, that position. But um, for him going forward, it's going to be about, you know, taking the ball every time, building something sustainable. But, boy, I mean, is there a lot to be excited about? I mean, you know, you just see the process and, and how he goes about his business. And, and you know, regardless if it's the starting rotation or, or whatever it may be, that he's going to give himself a really good chance for success because he's such a hard worker. So, what does an off season look like for Garrett Cole? Do you shut it down for a little while? When do you start ramping it up? Um, just played a little catch the last couple days because because uh, I enjoy playing catch, and um, yeah, I'll probably ramp it real down here in the next you know week or so, and then. Uh, yeah, just start my process in, in 10 to 14 days and get, you know, just get back on it, um, get back in the gym, um, start looking at, start looking at some numbers and anticipating, you know, laying out the map when I'm going to start throwing, when I'm going to start throwing bullpens, you know, and uh, yeah, so that's all fun. It'll be relaxing, but the next few weeks will definitely be the peak relaxation one thing before I let you go Aaron Judge spoke in the clubhouse and he talked about you know some of the analytics side how you guys have all the tools necessary but maybe sometimes the numbers need to be filtered from a pitching perspective how do you evaluate the way that that stuff gets to you guys yeah you know I mean we, we have more than enough horsepower in, in any one department here I mean you know, Hal throws resources at, at everything uh, in order to just, you know, try to be the best at, at all of it. Um, I mean, to use an analogy, you know, sometimes a car with the most horsepower doesn't win the race. I mean, there's a lot of other things that come, come into play, you know, when you're trying to run around the track 162 times. And so... You know, I think we're forever going to be trying to optimize each one of those pieces. Um, and, you know, there's there's no part of the car that, you know, doesn't need to be monitored or doesn't need a check under the hood to a certain extent. So, and that that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to get back on the grind and, and just keep trying to find a way to get better in, 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 in any area, really. Garrett, thank you so much for the time. Have a great off season. And are you surprised we made it through an entire interview and I didn't even say Cy Young? Yeah. <laughs> Now. We didn't. We didn't, though, <laughs> Meredith. <laughs>